This is the Believe in Pro Wrestling Podcast. Here's Rick Uccino and SP3 on the Believe Podcast Network. Well, you're half right, Mr. Announcer Man. Rick Uccino in the house after an absolutely incredible AEW revolution. We're hitting the record at 12.09 a.m. I will be up at 5 a.m. this morning for the day job. Whoo! So right around the time when this drops at 7 a.m., oh, your boy's going to be hurting. Your boy's going to be hurting, but it was for a good cause. SP3 not in today. He's off this week on a much-deserved vacation because that man works more than anybody else I know. That guy does like 18 podcasts a day. It's incredible. Works on 36-hour days. But we got one of his cohorts, one of his good buddies, True Heel Romeo, in the house. It's all right. I'm his brother from another mother. It's okay. I'm here to fill in for him. And thank you for having me. Oh, no, it's, uh, appreciate it. you. You got you are one of the regulars on the True Heel Heat YouTube channel. So uh, uh, this should be like, uh, you know, riding a bike, talking about some fantastic professional wrestling. I mean, just I'm sitting here trying to get the rundown together, and I'm like, <laughs> I text you. I'm like, where do we even where do you start? start? Where do we even start? I'm, I like to take notes during the show, and there's like so many damn high spots and what the hells and holy shits and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, I just stopped writing and just started watching. Like, there, there was no point. <laughs> there's no point anymore. Like, I stopped writing notes like right before the jade cargill match i'm like there's no point to this because we still have eight more matches to go and i'm running out of damn paper taking notes as it is so i'm just gonna try and remember everything we're not gonna have time obviously to get through everything um you know my god man just right, so i'll know. just throw my notes away i'll throw my notes away i tried to write notes for everything man <laughs> you, you, i told you i told you i told you we might as well just start by asking First of all, is this the greatest AEW pay-per-view of all time? And then what was your response? I, I don't even... Is, is that even a question? <laughs> I and mean, I was like, all right, so how, well, it's one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time. I mean, I mean, seriously, when you, when you put together a 12-match card, and I think my biggest complaint about a 12-match card is it's going to go long. And they don't do the WWE thing where, oh, well, we got 12 matches. Well, some of them will be two minutes. Some will be three minutes. You know, maybe yeah. we have a quick... None of that. There was none of that. Everybody got their time tonight, which I appreciate. And I'm sure the performers really, really appreciate them. I, th- I feel like Cargill and, and Ted Conti was the shortest match of the night, which, you know, I think was pretty, pretty predictable that that was going to be the case. But Ty Conti got some some good offense in there. And Jade still looks like an absolute mother truck and star coming out in the Mortal Kombat gear looking good as hell. Jade. Uh, oh, my goodness. I mean, every everything hit. I can nitpick, and I probably will nitpick here uh, a little bit to appease the you guys never crash AEW crowd out there. We'll nitpick here a little bit. We got to get into Hangman Adam Page retaining his world championship. We got to get into Britt Baker retaining her women's championship and getting a new belt uh, at that. CM Punk and MJF, a very bloody dog collar match. Daniel Bryan and, and John Moxley, they bled as well last night. Shocker there. Yep, William freaking Regal is in <laughs> AEW. Like I could keep going. Swerve Scott sh- or uh, Isaiah Swerve Strickland, excuse me, shows up. Jurassic Express gets the biggest win of their career in AEW, and there's a lot. We'll do a little bit of WWE here as we uh, preview, or at least head into Monday Night Raw this evening. Uh, how how does they, Raw follow that? How does Raw they follow don't, that? I don't even try. Don't even try. Just do what you do, AEW. Real quick, though, before we uh, get into all that, some some my, minor housekeeping uh, items here. Football season may be over, folks, and it makes me sad. But basketball is in full steam ahead mode, both pro and college hoops. March Madness is right around the corner. And from all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. Head on over to the website, use your mobile devices to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code 
Believe to get started. That is spelled B L E A V. And it is not just basketball. Bet online, your number one source for hockey, boxing, UFC odds. It's the best in the business from sports to your favorite Vegas casino games. Bet online, your number one online wagering destination. The fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet online where the game starts. We do appreciate you guys joining us here today. Uh, hit us up on the uh, social medias at Rick Uchino at True Heel Romeo. And by the way, as soon as you're done here, as long as you're listening after about three o'clock Eastern Standard Time today, uh, why don't you go ahead and click on over and listen to my uh, interview with Corey Graves and Carmella, uh, which just dropped ahead of Monday Night Raw. Talked a lot about their YouTube show, obviously, yes, but heading into WrestleMania as well. Uh, Corey Graves with some... Uh, some pretty interesting comments about what it's like to work uh, WrestleMania as a commentator. And Carmella has one big, this is what we call a tease in the business. Carmella has had one big concern heading into this match with Sasha Banks and Naomi at WrestleMania. It might not be what you think, but then again, it might be what you think, considering it's Carmella. Really fun conversation. Make sure to check that out, guys. All right, let's dive into this, Realms. AEW knocks this, this some bitch out of the park last night headlined by adam page retaining the world championship and i think if the match had the gang wars right as as sean ross app would say i think if i had like one minor critique on the night other than the length of the show is there was a lot of outside interference in this and we we dog this a lot in in wwe when there's outside interference and there's constant shenanigans and this that and the other thing it's getting a little old with Britt Baker. I think actually it's jumped the shark with Britt Baker, but we had Red Dragon interfering in this match, and then we had all 20 members of, of the Dark Order come down to take out two guys that allows Hangman Adam Page uh, to, to win this matchup, and we had Confetti Gate on, on social media where somebody said they saw some confetti, confetti falling from the sky and thought maybe Adam Cole was going to win the title. None of that. None of that. <laughs> Hangman Adam Page retains the championship. Shenanigans aside, this was a really, really strong match because, of course, it was going to be. The crowd was hot for this one. They had all the Adam chants. Uh, let's go, Adam. Adam sucks. That was uh, there was, there oh, was a gosh. lot of really good stuff to like about this matchup. Um, yeah, man, this this is exactly what Hangman Adam Page's uh, world title run needed uh, was this last few weeks. He had that really good Texas death match with Lance Archer and now he follows it up with this banger uh with uh, with Adam Cole and the 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 reign of the cowboy shit is now in full gear baby I feel like people maybe underestimated how good this match was going to be because of everything else that was on the card some people were even saying maybe MJF and CM Punk should headline uh main event I don't know how you felt about that I, look, your world title match should go on last. Yes. If, it, if, it, if it wasn't going to be Adam Page and Adam Cole, it should have been Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. But the build for Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa wasn't good enough for the main event. And that's not the lady's fault. That's that's AEW's fault on that. That's my opinion on that. So this was absolutely the right choice to main event. All the shenanigans of everybody coming out, I, it was predictable. It, it, it does make sense. I, I knew Red Dragon was going to come out and try to help adam cole um dark order my only problem was that dark order it took them a while to come out like come on what are you trying to gather everybody backstage to see make sure you got everybody what was going on with that like it's way too long but um you, you want to talk about way too long how <laughs> like what what more has to happen for a referee to throw some some mfers out of the ringside area i mean how many times did Rebel and Jamie Hader get involved in the Brit Thunder Rosa match before the ref was finally finally could just go. All right, get the hell out of here. That was same same thing in the main event. That same was annoying. Um, that's one of the things on the show you nitpick about. Like, I really wanted to see Thunder Rosa have her moment now, but but I like if it's a booking decision to save that moment. I know SB three has mentioned this. You know, two weeks from now, when they're in Texas, yeah. Thunder Rosa can have her moment there. If you do a rematch there, it is it is St. Pat uh, St. Patrick's Slam, which right. is the anniversary of that rematch. Uh, if you do that rematch, but oh my God, they made the announcement that Thunder Rosa has to fight Layla Hirsch, and yeah. I'm like, why? 
she got screwed tonight. Why does she, she have to reprove it? Yeah. Reprove that she needs another match. I, I didn't like that that announcement and that booking. I think Thunder Rosa should have a rematch just from all the shenanigans that happened in that match on itself. I, I felt like they, and we'll get into this a little bit more in, in, in the five count, but I, I feel like they, I feel like Tony Khan was on social media and saw a bunch of people pissed off and was like, okay, we, 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 we gotta, we gotta win out something here. We, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta go in here. We gotta fix this. We gotta they listen got that to graphic it. ready quick. Yeah. They got it quick. They were like, we, we gotta, uh, we gotta appease the audience. All right. I know they're pissed. They said it was an eliminator. Her, her, her moment's coming. She's going to be back on Dynamite this week. It's going to be fine, guys. Don't worry. I, I could see Tony Khan doing something like that. Either that or he's a smart guy, and he knew that this booking decision was going to get some backlash. And right? what would you think of that new belt? I love it. I love the new Beautiful. belt. It's I, gorgeous. I wasn't a fan of the old belt. I understand they're trying to pay homage to old women's championships of the past, but this belt is way better. Look, I the first one they had looked like a toy replica, right? So when they finally like updated it, and let Hikaru Shida walk it down to the ring like one damn time. <laughs> that was that was real, that was great. And then Britt Baker got the big the bigger one. It was basically the same thing, but they it was like, "Honey, I shrunk the kids," or "I blew up the kids." Right? And they just <laughs> it just made it bigger. Um, and I didn't. I wasn't. You know, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the design. It just seemed out of place, right? Yeah. With all the other championship belts, um, this one fits the mold of all the, the beautifully designed AEW championships. So it's definitely, definitely an upgrade there. But uh, the, the question I have now out of this, cause I'm pretty sure I know where Adam Cole at And just going back to the main event here. I know where Adam Cole's going, right? Cause he still got, he still has his work friends and his college friends that he's trying to get <laughs> together. All right. And, and, and be a cohesive unit a and they get great, into a fight. Great analogy. It, it never works, right? It never works. Uh, so, you know, you had the tag team championship match where Red Dragon and the Young Bucks cost themselves that uh, uh, both multiple times uh, shots. Of what the a match. Titles. Very, very good. Very, very good. So Adam Cole and that whole implosion of the elite. And we saw Don Callis earlier on the night. So Kenny Omega has got to be right around the corner somewhere. Kenny Omega is going to be like the yeah. dad who went out of town and he left his elder son in charge. And his elder son was like, hey, I got this, man. We're cool. Everything will be fine. House will be spotless when you get back. And then dad shows up and the house is on fire, right? So, like, that's that's what's going to happen when Kenny Omega. That, that all is going to burn down with the elite and it's going to implode. I don't know where Hangman Adam Page goes after this. I don't know who his next challenger is or should be. CM Punk made the, the 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 belt wave after he beat MJF. Not quite sure if that's the route you want to go, but that would be another notch in the Cowboys had if he uh, defeats CM Punk because I don't think whoever challenges uh, Adam Page next is winning. I just don't. You're right because you know everybody had it in their mind that MJF is going to challenge Hangman Page at double or nothing. That's going to be MJF's moment. But the way things unfolded tonight with Wardlow, yep. it's like they speed rushed that. Um, MJF is going to have his hands full with, with Wardlow. That that storyline, which I can't wait to see unfold, like that. And you have to wonder now, like, what do you do with Hangman Page? I have a vote. I have What's an that? idea. I know where I would go. Uh oh. Just because House of Black is awesome. Let's. Let's 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 heat up Hangman Adam Page versus Malachi Black. Like, please, let's just let's just dive into it. Find some way to to get that started because mm. that match would bang. And yeah, I don't even care who wins. To be completely honest with you, I just want to see that feud. I want to see House of Black on a main card. I want to see them in a main top level program because those dudes, as a group collectively, have everything. And yeah, you could talk about trios, this trios that well, we'll wait until Kenny Omega gets back to introduce the trios title. Let me put, put Malachi black in a main event scene with hangman, Adam page. And again, you have another huge mountain and in a literal sense with Brody King there uh, for hangman, Adam page to have to climb. I think that would be another great little, little that, program for him. That would be awesome. My only thing is that, Okay, so the House of Black they had their match, and that was a good match mm -hmm. on the pre on the uh, buy-in, right? But um, it, it, they still left meat on the bone in that match 
because they need to redo oh. that match with Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. So they have to do the Death Triangle versus the House of Black as as they are constructed. They still have to do that. I I think I think what we're heading to here is maybe it is CM Punk. Maybe it is CM yeah. Punk and Hangman Page. Maybe it is. Maybe CM Punk I'll, earned it. I'll, how far away are we from Double or Nothing? Is that May? That's in May. That's uh May. two months. You two months, start, which is definitely better for that. I mean, the, MJF and CM Punk went what November to November to March, so they they did five months worth of a build there, right? Which I still think they need a pay per view in between that gap. That's just way too long. Yeah, it is a bit long. Yeah, and then you got two months. You yeah. know, it it space it out a little bit better, but. I think CM Punk. That that's just me pipe dreaming, putting Malachi Black in a, in a situation right. there. You're right with Phoenix there. I I think they will go CM Punk. I don't know if CM Punk wins that. Not he sure. shouldn't. He shouldn't. No. He shouldn't. He should lose that. I still think the next. I still think the next champion is going to be MJF, which could mean that Hangman Adam Page is hanging on to that world title for a very long time. But then also maybe you have CM Punk win at Double or Nothing against Hangman Page. And then you and then go to MJF. all out, and then it's MJF taking it no. in Chicago, three and zero against Ooh. CM Punk. Ooh. Well, three and one now, three and zero in Chicago. Chicago. Well, three and zero in Chicago. That's what I mean. Yeah, three and zero on the road uh, for that situation. It would Even not be a major AEW pay per view if it wasn't for a couple of surprises. One of one of these surprises we knew was on the way because of Sean Ross app from Fightful.com said Swerve Strickland was uh, all elite sooner rather than later, and then. Uh, Tony Schiavone, if you could hold the clipboard just correctly, just to give us a, a little bit of a, a, of a suspense there. We saw Swerve in big, bold letters, like right in front of the <laughs> camera as Tony Schiavone's holding the contract. So that kind of killed it there. So we knew Swerve was coming. We didn't know William Regal was coming. Oh, my gosh. Made me so damn happy. Uh, just, just to see that man and his prominence in the three-piece suit just trudging down to the ring like he was like he was I, I keep doing family analogies but just like he was there to break up a fight between two of his sons yeah first it off, did feel like that yeah yes right first off brian danielson and john moxley was Ooh. spectacular that was everything i wanted it to be and more those two dudes beat the hell out of each other. It's like they couldn't decide what they wanted to do. They couldn't decide whether or not they wanted to try and out slug each other or out wrestle each other. And it was just like this perfect marriage of both. They just went from one to the other. Like, well, that ain't working. Let me see if I can, you know, out wrangle them. Nope, that ain't working. Let's go back to slapping the crap out of each other. That ain't working. Let's go back to the submissions. And finally, Moxley was able to, to out wrestle uh brian danielson for for one uh three second count there and danielson was pissed and then they start fighting and then william regal comes out and these two dudes are just covered in blood and regal slapping him he doesn't care he's like <laughs> head button him like a pit bull like what what no you ain't doing this you ain't gonna hit me i'm william regal bitch and he got these two guys to shake hands and now all of a sudden we're looking at a, sp a, a the possibility romeo of a tag team of Danielson and Moxley led by William Regal. Praise the Lord. Life is good. Life is good. First of all, on the, on the Swerve Strickland stuff, you know, in hindsight, I kind of wish they didn't do it on this show. It kind of gets overshadowed by everything else that goes yeah. on, even by William Regal. It gets overshadowed. You, yeah. you might have just wanted to hold off on that. Until dynamite, maybe. I mean, hell, I just brushed right over it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I love Swerve. We all love Swerve. It's yeah. just, it's just so much happened on the show. You kind of didn't need it. Uh, the William Regal stuff. My goodness. By the way, that match, it felt like it didn't start until both men bled, and it's hilarious yeah. that they both bled at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't need to see Brian obviously handing the blade off to the ref like a like a quarterback <laughs> answer to a running back. That sucked. But okay, I'll look past that. I'll look past that. We're nitpicking. We're nitpicking. We're nitpicking. We're nitpicking. Uh, Regal, what can you say? As soon as I saw, my heart was full. I thought everyone's <laughs> heart was full. Everybody loves William. Re how do you not love William Regal? And second of all, how do you look at William Regal and say, we don't need you anymore? How no, do you let no. William Regal go? How? Like, 
and that's this is something that me and, and sp3 have talked about before right like william regal was working on nxt you your your entire goal is to build the next generation of top professional wrestling superstars and you have an entire locker room full of green 20 somethings that's you and you let go william regal and samoa joe and they all love him they all love him yes yes oh. why i don't get it uh, you're too close i don't to get it you're too close to paul we gotta let you go yeah <laughs> it definitely feels like there's a lot of spite we're just gonna do this because you know we we want to beat triple h down it definitely seems like i'm not saying that's what's happening but man it definitely, wanders. yeah it's like jesus and then you get vince mcmahon going on pat mcafee saying yeah i wish i got more out of my family members it's like god damn <laughs> i missed that line i watched that interview but i missed that line yeah he's like just that was one of the things that he's that was like cold-blooded man i don't know if that was directed at shane i don't know if that was directed <laughs> at triple h I don't think it was. I don't think it was directed at Stephanie. Stephanie definitely seems to be the oh, golden child girl. And then so Vince is dropping the uh, my wife at the time. Or I mean, my hilarious. wife. I mean, my wife. <laughs> so so the chatter I saw online from a lot of people and, you know, it's it's a natural thing to think is with William Regal now being all elite. And with Tony Khan purchasing ROH. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Tony Khan. Tony Khan's focus needs to be on AEW. I, I, I vehemently think that's all he needs to focus on. He shouldn't be trying to run two companies at once. So, like, people are wondering, does William Regal maybe take on ROH for himself? Like, oh, I think. What do you think about to. that? I think he's got to. And um, I think it was Cassidy Haynes who reported that they're going to kind of use ROH as their version of NXT and kind of be a, a developmental. Uh, well, program. NXT is already developmental for AEW, so they got two. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong there. You're definitely not wrong. Who says WWE can't build superstars? <laughs> you're just building them for other companies. We're talking That's about Swerve. Is. We're talking yeah. about Keith Lee. We're talking about Adam Cole. Oh, even though he's not developmental, developmental whatever. Yeah, All yeah, these yeah. guys from NXT. Kyle O'Reilly. Already here. Can't find spot. You can't find a spot for Kyle O'Reilly. What are you doing? Uh, but anyway, yeah. No, this, the, look, Tony Khan knows what he's doing. He wants to build, he wants to have ROH be their developmental system. He sees value in William Regal where WWE did not. And he can have him double dip. He can be that coach. He can be that authority figure. He could be that teacher in Ring of Honor. And he can be an on screen character for Brian Danielson and, and John Moxley. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And everybody loves William Regal. And that's the thing, man. It's like, he could he could be a mouth mouthpiece for those guys, but they don't need a mouthpiece no. either. <laughs> no, the you know, you know, between the three of these guys are going to be insane. He's not a wrestler, but this might be like top three or five uh, pickups that Tony Khan has got. Way oh, sure. My goodness, he's going to be so instrumental for them. And I'm and I'm sitting, whatever role they give him. Yeah, and I'm sitting here and I'm watching Regal. I love the fact that I think it was Excalibur because he was on fire on commentary tonight. Well, some others weren't so much. All respect still. Of course, uh, respectfully. Yeah, I say that respectfully. Um, he brought up the history, right, between Regal and Danielson and Regal and Moxley. And I'm just sitting back and I'm, thinking, I'm sitting there going, holy crap, man. Because it's like Regal is the one who like really went to bat for Moxley in, in WWE. If if you've read, I'm, I'm not going to spoil everything, but if you go, if you haven't read Mox's book, like there's a whole chapter on, on NXT and what Regal did for him and the promo classes and this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, this goes back 15 years. It's so perfect. It's such See, a, I didn't know that part. I didn't know that part. actually. Yeah. It's such an easy story to tell on television. And yeah, when you look at it, John Moxley and, and, and Daniel Bryan are a perfect team. They're a perfect team. And William Regal is the perfect guy to lead this team. And here's the thing. They could still map out Daniel Bryan's vision. They could add a Daniel Garcia to this group. They could add a Dante Martin or any of these young guys. Any of these. They take their sweet time with it, too. Like, you don't, yes, have, to rush, you don't have to rush that. No. 
you could tell a story. And we know AEW knows how to long term story book. You could do you could do. take six months, you could take 12 months, like two yeah. years. Yeah. It took Hangman Adam Page two years to, <laughs> to beat Kenny Omega and win the AW championship. By the way, how great was Brian Danos's face when he got slapped by William Regal? It was like he loved it. He oh, loved you it. loved every damn second of it. Because they I mean all the the only thing they really had William Regal do hell, William Regal wasn't enough, right? In NXT. Like he couldn't physically get involved. He couldn't corral everybody. So they had to bring in Samoa Joe as the uh, the special enforcer, right? They they muzzled William Regal in NXT and then occasionally allowed him to scream war games. <laughs> he shows up in AEW, he's getting he's getting blood up all in his face. He's slapping the hell out of John Moxley and Brian Danielson. I love it. He's going to start it. screaming blood and guts. <laughs> Loved every and Samoa second. Joe. You mentioned that name. I almost forget about it. Like I, I still think he's on his way. Maybe I still I, think yeah, so. Look, that would be an absolute, absolute another home run. And I think he's on his way. I think there's a few other people who are on their way as well. Wouldn't be surprised if somebody shows up on Dynamite because this is what Tony Khan loves to do. He loves he huge loves, announcements. Huge announcements. He <laughs> loves to bring in talent. And look, he's bringing in guys that he sees value in and he knows he can use and i firmly believe he has plans for these people whether it's next week three months from now three years from now but here's the important thing he now has two companies yeah that's the thing. and he's got a roster that's big enough to fill two companies Absolutely. so these dudes who are buried on the depth chart guess what you're probably going to go over and get some tv time on ring of honor wherever that that may land and that's the way it should be that's the hbo way be. max HBO Max, shall we say? Though I think that's good. I mean, SP3 and I were talking about this. They got the video library now. They got 20 years worth of content that they could actually put up there. 23 if you count uh, uh, all the uh, AEW programming that's been on so far. So look, I just really hope Tony there. focuses on AEW and delegates ROH. That has to be key. Because if he tries to do both at the same time, he's, he's, it's just it's going to be a train wreck. It's going to be hard to do. Yeah. No and one I, man I, can do that. I don't know. Look, the guy already helps run the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got a soccer team as well, and now he owns two professional wrestling yes, teams. Well, and for oh, like I didn't even mention second, those parts. And for like a half a second, everybody thought he was running for Congress. So, I mean, that like... Was funny. <laughs> the guy is uh, a machine. He, I, I, it, it takes a special kind of person, both Vince McMahon and Tony Khan, to do this. It really does. I mean, these guys don't sleep. Then again, neither neither do I. But I don't I don't want to I don't run a wrestling. Come on, we gotta give Rick some sleep tonight. Man. It's time to answer the five count on the Believe Podcast Network. All right, look there there are so many matches last night. <laughs> I, I wish I could just go through and run them all, but I we we can't do an hour and a half podcast. I'm sorry. There's we, something we, to say about every single match. There, there's so much to say, but let let's start with uh, these these are the five biggest questions coming out of the weekend, or at least that I have deemed them to be. So I'm sorry if I'm skipping over your favorite match of the night. Britt Baker in what was probably the biggest upset of the night, I would say. Uh, Thunder Rosa seemed to be the heavy favorite, uh, the sentimental favorite, the fan favorite. A lot of people thought this was her time last night. You touched on it earlier. Britt Baker does retain. Thanks to Jamie Hayter. Thanks to Rebel. Are you good with that booking decision, Romeo? Man. Man. If Thunder Rosa would have won, I'd have gave this pay-per-view a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of, this would have been a perfect, perfect pay-per-view. But if I, what I said earlier, if if that comes to fruition, what SP, this is SP3's idea, he brought it to my attention. I got to give him credit. Sure. Uh, if it happens in two weeks, St. Patrick's Day anniversary, then I'll let it slide. And it'll be okay. And then maybe I come back to this and be like, all right, it's still a 10 out of 10. Because they still delivered weeks later the thing for me here is and you know me sp3 graham matthews we we recorded the uh prediction show late last week uh thursday night and we talked about this match and i i kept going back to the booking that happened on dynamite where thunder rosa got massively over on Britt baker like she dominated her in that tag team match and pinned her clean as a sheet in the middle of the ring 
And I'm sitting here. And going, I said, I said to myself, I'm not gonna fall for that. Uh, it's a, Tony's trying to trick me. Thunder Rose is still gonna win. There, there was, there was something <laughs> about, there was something about that where I just, it, it just kept eating at me that that booking decision. And I, I picked Thunder Rosa Thursday night, and by Friday night, Saturday morning, I'm sitting here going, I think Britt's gonna win this damn thing. <laughs> I really do. I really do because, and again giving credit to sp3 you know he, yes. he kind of put this in my mind like the build to this match it just didn't feel like we had reached the climax yet it felt like there was still legs to this feud that could carry it for a few more weeks or at least a couple more weeks it felt like it needed more heat to it and this is what they did at revolution they gave it a little bit more heat and they knew that they could carry it for a couple more weeks up into its climax, and you laid it out. Does Thunder it make Rose, you? Does it make you Thunder thirst, thirst for it more? Yeah, Thunder Rosa's hometown, St. Patrick's Day Slam, the one-year anniversary of the Lights Out match. It's all poetic. It all culminates at that one spot, and I guarantee you, Thunder Rosa winning two weeks from now, she'll get a bigger pop. In yeah. a bigger moment than she would have gotten tonight. And it Wait, should absolutely main event. Oh, hands down. Hands down. Absolutely should main event. It'll get a bigger spotlight. It'll get a bigger spotlight. Because also, this match was on a very difficult spot on the card. I mean, there was... a the, the There was... Yes, what was it after? Oh, was it after... God. Punk? It was either Ooh. Punk and MJ... What well, was it? Punk and MJF? And I think it, it was either right after Punk and MJF or it was... Again, there were so many damn... Matches on the card, and I stopped taking notes. <laughs> Damn it! Why did I stop taking notes? But uh, yeah, it was it was definitely in that lull period where, like, right before they started ramp. I think it was the third the third to last match of the night because then they had the the tag team match, uh, the the trios match with with Sting and Darby, and then you know that got everybody kind of ramped back. We up. surpassed all expectations. I'm sorry, uh, I know yo, we're not yeah. talking about every match, but okay. yeah, that was the that was the match I had the least. <laughs> like, I don't care about this match. I just don't. <laughs> And then it blew my freaking mind. Sammy Guevara, you crazy bastard. Anyway, Spanish fly out the, through the stage was absolutely nuts. Isaiah Cassidy's crazy as well. But and yes, it was it was after CM Punk MJF. I jumped it up. Yeah. So there was there was a lot there. And that's right, because Brian Danielson and John Moxley was third to last. So right. yeah, it was it was in that spot where you had so many big matches. That would have been easy to get lost there. So they get a bigger spotlight. It would make for a better moment. You add more heat onto this. You really get people pissed off at, at Britt Baker. I am tired of the outside interference because they have leaned so heavily on this during Britt's title run. But what it's going to do is it's going to set up some kind of stipulation match. So Thunder Rosa will win on, on, on Wednesday over Layla Hirsch. She'll earn her opportunity again. At least give AEW some credit there. They're not just handing her a rematch. Like WWE would simply just book the rematch. They're at least going to have her earn another title shot. No, I'm annoyed by that. I disagree with you on that strongly. Like, why does she have to earn it? She clearly got screwed. I was so annoyed by that. I know WWE does the same garbage with no rematches whatsoever. But in this case, in this case, you see it right in front of your eyes. Hey, Why? look, man. Look. And then another the question. Referee, the referee cost Thunder Rosa that match. It's right. no different than the referees costing the Bengals the Super Bowl, but they're not going to get to go back and replay <laughs> that third down play where Logan Wilson did not have pass interference. They're Don't not going to get my re- Joe Burrow jersey out here. Get, they're not going to go back and replay it. All right. Referee's decision is final. So, yeah, they're going to have Thunder Rosa. What do you do for the stipulation? You can't do a steel uh, cage because uh, we've seen over the years uh, they still find their way in the steel cage. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Do you just say, "Oh, they're not a lot of ringside," or I don't know. Do they do they have the cojones to just run it back the same exact match? A lights out match. Lights out too. <laughs> I say go for lights out too. Screw it. Just Screw do it. it. My question, by the way, tonight, where the hell was Mercedes Martinez? Yes, I was like, does Thunder Rosa have no friends? Dude, like, like, where's friends. her BFF? Where's Nothing. her BFF? You know what would be That's great? Frustrating. It makes it more frustrating. You know what would be great is if the same kind of crap, let's just say they don't even do stipulation. Let's just say it's the same kind of crap where <laughs> f- 
follow me on this. They, they, they don't even do the stipulation. It's the same kind of crap where it's rebel and it's, and it's Jamie hater and they're getting involved. And the entire women's locker room who has watched Britt Baker cheat her way to hang on to the championship for months just gets fed up and comes out and kicks the crap out of all of them. And it kind of turns into a, like a, a lumber Jill match, but now it's everybody against Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa finally gets over without any I of the kind of, I have. kind of love that. That never crossed my mind, but I kind of love that idea. And you do that as soon as the match, as soon as the bell rings. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Make sure it's great. I love it. And, may, and maybe they set it up as a lumberjill match. I don't think we've really done those in AEW a whole lot. Uh, no, I don't need all that. I don't, I don't, I don't need all that, but I, I liked your idea from, from the beginning. Like, yeah, just have everybody take them out. I like that. Good so job. I, I under, I understand that people are upset because they wanted Thunder Rosa to get her moment tonight and felt like it was the right time for me. I didn't feel that it was the right time because I just didn't feel like we had reached the climax yet. Now we're heating up. Now we're ramping up two weeks from now. St. Patty's day slam in San Antonio. Have that be the main event. That's the time to pull the trigger. All right. I understand if you're upset this morning, but I'm telling you it'll be better in two weeks. I guarantee it has to be that way though. It has to be. That it way. has to be like it the same way. Okay, the same way that MJF's crying promo, I was like, when everyone was waxing poetic about it, I was like, okay, hold on. But the, I have to see how the shoe drops the next week. Yeah. And the way that dropped, then it was like, okay, great promo now. Yeah. Because MJF, you know, did what he did. So it has to be this way. It has to be this way. You have to deliver the other end of this for this to make sense. Fantastic segue here as we move into number two, CM Punk <laughs> and MJF. Did they culminate the greatest rivalry? In AEW's brief history with CM Punk getting one over on MJF and beating him in the dog collar match. And beating means two things uh, on this night. My goodness. My goodness. This was beautiful. This was storytelling to AT. This surpassed my expectations of the storytelling they were going to do. I just thought CM Punk was going to win. And, you know, that's that. And he, he gets the upper hand. But no, they took it a step further. First of all, now this didn't hit home to me, but I know to a lot of you diehards who watch ROH back in the day, the old ROH theme, the old ROH entrance. I know you guys love that. I know you guys love that. The match itself. By the way, I loved MJF uh, talking trash on the mic. It gave me rock mankind. I quit vibes. Remember I, was that gonna match? Say, I was like, when did this turn into an I quit match? Oh, but yeah, it was awesome great. though. Yeah. Um, Wardlow, geez, Wardlow, he knocked it out of the park with his acting, his facial expressions. He's been knocking it out of the park from the beginning. Yeah. But tonight was another level. I, I did not, I don't think anyone saw this full blown. It's now it's official. This is the face turn was yeah. tonight and it worked in every single sense. This is so intriguing going forward. You know, you got Wardlow. He has his TNT title match, and I'm sure he's going to get screwed over by Spears or MJF. And well, MJF is clearly going to go back on his word and say, all right, well, this is do that too. Now. He's he like, you want to keep your job? You give me your TNT title shot. I get so, you that's going to be the angle that's going to happen here. Does Tony Khan make himself an on-screen character again and give Wardlow an AEW contract? Does that get him out of that? You could do that. I, I think you have to. I think I think Wardlow. I don't think Wardlow will give it up. He'll get fired, and I think Tony Khan will sign him, and we'll finally oh, get yeah. Wardlow. Yeah, you can do it that way too. Yeah. You can do it that way too. That's yeah. that's be That's great, man. That'll be fun to see play out. That'll be fun. Yeah, and 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 look, they. And this is why I'm going to say yes to this question because so much of this has been great, right? Like the the build up to. The, the promo exchanges just going back to the first time that these two were in the same ring at the same time they didn't say a word cm punk just stared down mjf just gave him a smile and walked away and that's all we needed because we knew what was coming all they needed to do was give us a little tip of the cap to say hey look you've been waiting for it and it's coming it's cm punk and it's mjf and we're just going to start with promos and we're just going to do a lot of really good promo exchanges and they and every single one every single one they hit it out of the park and then come the matches and mjf beating cm punk twice in his hometown 
brilliant. Then you come back with the the MJF great promo, as you said, where he's talking about why he hates CM Punk so much and why he does the things that he does and how he felt betrayed by CM Punk and Punk falling for it hook, line, and sinker and him coming back the next week and saying, am I the good guy here? Am I the bad guy here? I'm trying to be better. Let's bury the hatchet. And then you have MJF bury his his foot and punks junk. And the, you know, he's bloodies him up and he hangs him on the rope. And all of this, it showcases Max absolutely. It reminds you how great CM Punk is. But at the end of all of this, it's Wardlow that comes out as the new star. It's freaking brilliant. Wardlow is over as hell. They have done a fantastic job of getting this man over with simple facial expressions and power bombs. And now he's the number one contender for the TNT championship. Like, I guess technically number two because Sammy Guevara still has to defend it first, but whatever. (laughs) He's got a shot at the belt. He finally turns on MJF. The whole, I can't find it. Oops. Here it is. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm just going to leave it right here for you, Maxi. And CM Punk grabs it, flips off MJF, and hits him with the knockout yeah. after just a grueling match. Love a good thumbtack spot, even if they kind of missed it and Punk just ended up with a bunch of punctures in his butt. Um, you know, but, man, it's it was so good. I'm going to say yes. This is, I think, so far in the three-year history of AEW, this has been the best rivalry. This has been the best booking. And the fact that you get a third person over probably more than the other two yeah it goes to the brilliance of the booking of all of this i think it has overtaken hangman page and kenny omega although they could still tell a lot more stories still with that yes so they don't give up on that and then i think in the third spot you also have Britt baker and thunder rosa which they're they're going to continue telling that story too. sure so you got you got three of those that, that could still keep going With all of that said, we move to number three. Was Wardlow the right guy to win the face of the revolution ladder match last night? Because there were a lot of people who wanted Keith Lee to win or they wanted, you know, Powerhouse Hobbs or Ricky Starks or or anybody else. There were a lot of really good options. Some people wanted Swerve to get added to that match. Did they make the right call with Wardlow, Romeo? Absolutely. Uh, Just from the storyline that we're talking about, with MJF, it just blends right in. Um, Keith Lee, relax, folks. He doesn't lose anything here. He doesn't lose anything. Here. Not like he got pinned. It's not like he submitted. Yeah, he got thrown through a table with uh, Will Hobbs, but it's it was by Wardlow. It's okay. Like I don't think Keith Lee loses anything here. You don't want Shane Strickland added here. No, you don't have to do that. You, you didn't even have to have Shane Strickland on the show. Sure. Yeah. Um, no. This was the this was I think this was the right call. And I'm not just saying that because I picked Wardlow to win this match. I'm saying that because it was the right call it, it's for storyline purposes. Keith Lee can uh, advance going forward. I mean, it seems like he's getting beef with Ricky Starks and the team's has, and that's going to be Keith Lee going forward. It's gonna it's gonna be that. Give give me Lee and Hobbs in a hoss fight. There just, you go. Yeah, and 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 this ladder match, while brutal at times and i hope everybody's okay right because there were a lot of bad bumps in this match <laughs> ricky starks the power bomb onto the ladder uh orange cassidy i i do believe got taken out of this match after he was yeet tossed out onto the Oof. uh the the entrance ramp yeah, he hit shot. he hit his head pretty hard uh on that ramp and it's pretty damn clear to me that he wasn't able to continue when you had Danhausen come out and do a spot, a distraction spot, and then Orange Cassidy didn't get back into the match. It seemed a curse. Kind of, yeah, he he does the whole curse on Ricky Starks, and hey, it worked because Starks ended up in that damn ladder uh, after the Wardlow power bomb. So a lot of a lot of bad bumps. The power bomb wasn't career. a cleanest, by the way. Like no. something went wrong there. No, I, I just think I don't think Wardlow had him all the way and he's right. like screw it he's going <laughs> oh, please be okay and luckily he tucked his head and everything was fine there but uh i hope orange cassidy's all right because it was pretty clear to me that he he wasn't able to finish but yeah wardlow was the guy for everything that we've already mapped out here uh, i should have rearranged these it's 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 the it's the perfect storytelling here i cannot wait to see 
how this unfolds between MJF and Wardlow. Yeah, it's intriguing. It, it's, I'm telling you, on Wednesday night, it's either going to be, MJF is going to give him the ultimatum. It's going to be, you either give me your TNT title shot or Ooh. you're fired. And you it, don't get the title shot, period, because you don't have a job. So that, I ultimately think that's what's going to happen. And then we may even get like the big, the bigger face turn of the night because Wardlow is going to have to think about it, right? He's going to have to think about it. He's going to have to lull it over. MJF holds a, a, all this on, a, on over his head. And then maybe they close out the show on, on Wednesday night with, with Wardlow's answer. You and can then book Ward a whole show around just to build the whole table. show around it. And then Wardlow at the end of the night decides to just beat the crap out of Spears power bomb symphony to, uh, you know, on MJF and leaves him laying flat in the middle of the ring. And then Wardlow just grabs the microphone. And it's like, Hey, I just talked to Tony Khan. I'm officially all elite. And he just drops the damn microphone, slams it down on the ground. The crowd goes nuts and he can move on to his TNT title and shot then, where MJF will cost him the match probably. Yeah. And then you can build to double or nothing. And then he gets even more over. He's getting more and more over yes. the more the storyline progresses. Yes. And that pop for him when he when he turned around, when he put the ring down and he turned around walking to the back. That's the loudest pop. pop of the damn match. Oof. The loudest. And that's why I said yes to the previous question. They got him over more than anybody. He got the biggest reaction of one of the most highly anticipated matches. And he wasn't even involved in the damn match. Was Wardlow made tonight? Yes. Just from everything. Wardlow's yes. like the MVP of the show, probably. He, uh, it, uh, Yes. <laughs> in my opinion, yes. Him and my boy Luchasaurus. He, <laughs> he was showing out tonight. In rare form was Luchasaurus. As Jurassic Express gets the biggest win of their careers uh, in AEW. They beat the Young Bucks. And they beat Red Dragon. Fantastic match. Just, just high octane the whole way. Everybody's cooking with gas. The story unfolded exactly like I, I predicted it would. And if you don't believe me, go back and watch our Revolution pre preview show because I called this the most predictable match on the entire card. And then I remember Jay Cargill was wrestling. But... <laughs> I knew this match was going to play out this way. I knew that Red Dragon and the Young Bucks would not be able to hold up their alliance or this, that, and the other thing, and they would end up costing each other this match and allow Jurassic Express to pick up the win, and that is exactly what happened. And now these two teams go to the back of the line. It's a really, really stacked tag team division. Romeo, who do you think ultimately will be the ones to dethrone Jurassic Express for the AEW Tag Team Championships? I am so confused. I am so confused. Because I had the opposite thought of you. I thought I thought Red Dragon was going to win this match. Because, you know, the Red Dragon and Young Bucks feud is is front and center. W way more important than what Jurassic Express has going on. They were in the background for this entire feud. So now that they won this match, it's like, exactly. You're asking this question. What the heck is next? Because I know the Young Bucks and Red Dragon are about to have a feud with each other. And I figure that was it automatically going to have the tag team titles attached just I to make it so, even. I think that's so big. More they don't need the belt. It's so Say big. That again. They don't need them. See, I think it's the opposite. I think when people look back on this feud, they're going to want to see, oh, oh, it's for the tag team titles too, you know? But then you also hear these rumors of the trios titles coming. The trios titles. Oh, they're waiting for Kenny Omega to come back. And then that's where this all gets muddied. It's like, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do Adam Cole and Red Dragon and Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and the trios titles. I guess that's how they have titles involved. I don't know what's next for Jurassic Express. I do know though, I do know though who I eventually want to see tag team champions is Santana and Ortiz. That's what I know. I'm 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 biased though. I'm biased. That that's an option, and that is an option, and they that has been the storyline, right? Like they've They've wanted their tag team title shot. They've been blaming Chris Jericho. And I was actually surprised that they, I, I thought they would get involved in the Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho match. That's right. Tonight, yeah. And they did not. They were not. They, they didn't, were not even seen on the show at all. Right. But they have been asking and begging, uh, much like American Top Team with the TNT Championship. They are wondering why they're not getting a shot at the tag team title. So they would seem like a logical option uh, to, to take out Jurassic Express and finally 
have their moment to win the tag team championships. That makes a ton of sense. But we also had a brand new power house all-star tag team developed tonight uh -oh. in John Moxley uh -oh. and, Dan and Brian uh -oh. Danielson. <laughs> that could be an option. Absolutely. And also, if I see when you said the word rumors, I thought you were going for some other rumors because we all know what's coming down the pike here soon. Delete. Delete. Oh, boy. Delete. And Brother Nero, I knew you'd come. Man, Party you know. boys are going to be here pretty damn soon. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, really soon, maybe even this week, Pat, probably. maybe even this week. And Matt Hardy is going to tell a H what is it? A H F O to G T F O. By the way, uh, since we're talking Matt Hardy, the end of the match, man, that was rough. Like, I don't, I don't want to kill Matt Hardy. Like, I don't want to kill him, but I, I just don't understand why, why he was like leaning further away from where Darby had to do his coffin spot. And I, I wonder if if maybe Matt should have called an audible there. He is the veteran and yeah. kicked out of that because he because Darby clearly misses the coffin drop. He caught him. In and the then kidney. they show the replay twice. And like he caught him in that? the kidney. Uh, and if you've ever been hit in the kidney, that would be enough to put me down for three seconds. Uh, but I actually put a little bit of blame on Darby here as well, because what Matt Hardy was doing was selling. And if Darby just waits another second half more. second, another half second, another second. He gets enough of it to make it look. It, it's it was just it just came down to a timing thing. It was just totally accidental. It it, it's it, kind of the same thing that happened with Randy Orton and Montez Ford, to be completely honest with you, because Orton kind of just tucked his shoulder in at the last second. And it's like, you know, if Ford hits a half second sooner, half second later, he doesn't crunch his shoulder and end up with that injury on Monday Night Raw, which he was uh, performing at uh, Madison Square Garden for those of you who missed it. So. Uh, it he, sucked he, though because fine. that that match surpassed all expectations. It did, and it just had a flat ending, and like they deserve better. It they they did. Uh, that was insane. The Ricky Starks, you know, Spanish fly off of the. Good God Almighty! What was that off of the? What do you call it? Off I don't even the, know what to call it. <laughs> the prop stage, the yeah. you know whatever it is, and then he goes through the tables and onto the the entrance ramp. Like Jesus, you got sixty two, about to be sixty three year old Sting doing a freaking frog splash through three tables off of a freaking balcony. Like <laughs> what? It's like, dude, we get it. You're the goat. We, you don't, you don't have to keep doing this to yourself. You really I'll tell don't. you what, it was hard to find a bathroom break during this entire show. And they, there wasn't a whole lot of like WWE. They have a lot of time filler in their pay-per-views. Yes. This no, AW goes oh, bam, go, bam, go, bam, go, bam, bam. They'll show go, you the video go. package. That's it. And then yeah. bam. And it's not a no five minute video package. Like we're going to get it right. WrestleMania with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. It was like 60 seconds, <laughs> like 60 yeah. seconds. Boom. Gone. Yeah. If I had to pick one team to answer the question, I'm going to guess. Let's hear it. I'm going to guess Moxley and Danielson will be your that's next. A, no, it's a great guess, man. I'm going to guess they're going to be your next AEW uh, tag team champions. I'm not saying it's going to happen at <laughs> double or nothing. But I think it'll happen. Sooner. That's a tough spot to put Jurassic Express in, though, because everyone loves Mox and Brian. I know, oh, and that's, that's the a thing. tough spot to put them in. Well, here's the thing: because Mox is a, or Mox is a baby face, and Brian Danielson is a heel. So it's like, who's so? What direction do they go with this? Team, you could you go know? either direction. You could go either direction. What's William Regal going to be? Everybody's going to be happy. It has to, to be Regal face. Said. It has to be face. Everyone loves all three of them. Yeah. So. If this was WWE, I'd say, uh oh, that gives me pause. This is AEW, and I think they could book Babyface versus Babyface. <laughs> Speaking of WWE, as we wrap up the five count here, again, so much to get into with AEW, and we're going to get uh, into more of the fallout uh, from this pay per view throughout the week here on the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast. Um, reports coming out this weekend uh, about. So many reports coming out this weekend about Cody Rhodes. He's on again, off again, on again, off again. Yes, he's going to WWE. No, he's not. Creative's working on stuff for him. Oh, no, they're not. Who the hell knows what's going on with Cody Rhodes? And then the Wrestling Observer says that Stone Cold Steve Austin has yet to agree to an actual match at WrestleMania, which it definitely seems like they've been planning that there's going to be 
something going on with him, considering all the Texas hate that Kevin Owens has been doing recently. <laughs> Romeo, is WrestleMania in some serious trouble here if Stone Cold Steve Austin and Cody Rhodes are not on this card? No, I I, I don't think so. Um, Stone Cold, I think no matter what, I think you're still going to see him involved. He doesn't have to have an actual wrestling match. And you know what? Honestly, it's probably better he doesn't. Uh, who knows? Who knows like what he can deliver at this point of in his in his life uh, in the ring? Um, he could still we could still have fun with Kevin Owens without having the actual match. I don't know. We'll see about that. Cody Rhodes. I mean, this is all being sprung up on us like <laughs> randomly. Very, very much so the last couple of weeks. We never expected Cody Rhodes to be a part of WrestleMania. The the, the reports going back and forth is just, honestly, <laughs> it's just hilarious. You could just laugh at this point. Like, you have no idea what's going on at this point. It's, pro it's probably leaning more, more so that he's out now. Um, and that probably, who knows what he was booked for in the first place? To be at WrestleMania? Was it against Seth Rollins? Because Seth Rollins has nothing to do at WrestleMania. And that's my biggest issue with this. Yeah. Is because Cody Rhodes is the last big fish out there for Seth freaking Rollins. And I don't mean that as like this is now his stupid nickname, uh, stupid middle name that they have to call him. The guy's that good. He's one of your top stars. He's the guy who carry, helps carry Monday Night Raw. You don't have anything for him. If he's not there, it if Cody Rhodes isn't there, I don't know what Seth Rollins is doing other than accompanying <clears throat> Kevin Owens down to the ring to eat a stone cold stunner. And that's my biggest issue with this is like there's no backup plan for Seth Rollins. And if you look at the card right now, granted, we're going to get a lot more because we got two nights to fill, but they got nine matches and outside of the top three matches where we don't even have a WWE championship program because we have to do this winner-take-all championship unification that may not be a unification match anyway. Main event on night two. We got the two women's title matches, and then after that, we got the Mysterios versus The Miz and Logan Paul. We got Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin. <laughs> we got Pat McAfee and Austin Theory. We got Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn, which is now not going to be for the Intercontinental Championship. Thank you just God. mentioned three celebrity matches, three in two nights. Yeah. And then we have the women's tag team titles, which WWE miraculously remembered that they had. <laughs> so, again, listen to my interview with Carmella and Corey Graves later on today. But, uh, and, and that's not a knock on the women's division at all. That's a knock on the booking. All right. Again, that's a knock on the booking where the fact that they they just threw Sasha and Naomi together. And in the process of doing that, they doubled the amount of teams in their women's tag team division <laughs> because it's been Carmella and Zelina by themselves for months now. It's always makeshift tag teams. I know that Sasha and Naomi used to be team bad, but it's still a makeshift tag team. That was a makeshift tag team when they put them together. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's so now true. they're two time makeshift tag team <laughs> partners. This card to me, man, like, yeah, the celebrities are there, but outside of Edge and AJ Styles, is there really like in the top three matches? Is there anything that like screams WrestleMania? Uh, I don't know. And if if you if you can't if you can't advertise the fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to be in a match, then you kind of lose the whole point of Stone Cold being on the card because you are using that to sell tickets. Because here's the thing, Romeo. If he does a match with Kevin Owens or he does a spot with Kevin Owens, it's going to be the exact same thing. Right. It's going to be the exact. It's going to be an it's going to be an argument. It's going to be a stu a push, a shove. It's going to be a stunner. And there's either going to be a one, two, three before the beer drinking or there's not going to be a one, two, three before the beer drinking. It's the exact same thing. If you could just add, if you just told, I like, seriously, if you just told Austin that all you have to do is say, look, Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to be wrestling for the first time in 20 years. Okay. We're going to sell a bunch of tickets now. You're correct. You're correct in what you're saying. But um, if they were ever to able to agree to Stone Cold actually having a match and he's in his black trunks, he's in his uh, knee braces, his black boots. The vest and the belt, the vest, yes, 
and the bell rings, that crowd in Texas is going to go absolutely insane bonkers. It's your, it's your night one opener. You don't even have to have anybody come out, say, welcome to WrestleMania. All you have to do, you don't even set out the pyro. Just glass shatter. Break the glass. 80,000, 90,000, however many you're packing into Jerry's world, loses their mind. 130,000, according to Vince. For both nights? <laughs> For both nights? All right. I know it seats 100, but you're still talking about the stage and blacking some stuff off. So it's probably going to be two thirds capacity. So maybe 130 for both nights, but still that full capacity for WrestleMania crowd will lose their mind just off of the glass shattering. And that's all you have to do. I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to make this more than what it needs to be. I don't need to see 57 year old stone cold, Steve Austin, try to go out there and have a 10, 12 minute match with Kevin Owens. I don't need to see it. If you can have Goldberg squash Kevin Owens to take the Universal Championship <laughs> off of him, you can do this with Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, I tried to forget that. Don't we all? By the way, can I quickly, since we're on the topic of WWE, can I quickly rant about something? Sure. The MSG show. <clears throat> yes. Since we're talking about Cody Rhodes, I don't know why people thought Cody Rhodes was going to be there. He was never going to be there. But how does WWE... <laughs> Main event with Brock Lesnar and Austin Theory. You you got to do better than that Austin Theory. No, you can't do that. You can't have people wondering who Brock Lesnar is going to face. It, Roman Reigns faced Seth Rollins. Respectable. Sure. Understandable. Uh -huh. You can't main event with people anticipating who is going to be, and it's Austin Theory. I love Austin Theory, but no, not in that spot. No, I understand they had the cameras there for the whole angle with Brock and Roman at the end, which they're going to show yeah. on Monday Night Raw a million times. That's fine, but you can't put Austin Theory in that spot to the paying customer in the main events at MSG when you build it up as a big deal. It's a house show, and WWE didn't build it up as a big deal, to be honest with you. WWE wasn't the one who was, you know, hyping the fact that this might be Cody Rhodes or putting out tweets saying, oh, my God, everybody keep their eye on Madison Square Garden tonight. That wasn't WWE. doing. I that. understand that. I understand that. What I mean is in the sense of Brock Lesnar is having a championship match. It should not be against Austin Theory. Not. Do you agree <laughs> with that? Uh, I should get somebody else for that. For, for a storyline standpoint, it made sense from their spot out of Saudi Arabia, uh, to be honest with you. And I'm all I'm all about storyline stuff making sense. Um, but look, this was all about Brock and Roman at the end of the night and Brock getting his ass kicked and getting bloodied and this, that and the other thing. Austin Theory was, you know, he was a squash match. It wouldn't have been the I if understand you're going to run. If you're going to run a squash match with Brock Lesnar in the main event of Madison Square Garden, Austin Theory is the perfect guy to do that. But I, I understand. But it's Madison Square Garden. You cannot main event Brock Lesnar. Versus Austin. What do you mean by storyline that it makes sense for Austin Theory? They they had that spot. They they were the last two. He, that's right, what he but, did. Yeah, that's but. what he did when he came out and cut the promo. He's like, look, I'm here to avenge what the hell happened to me at Elimination Chamber. No, I didn't go to the MSG show. I am a New Yorker, but if if I paid money for that, and if it, <laughs> the main event was Austin Theory, Brock Lesnar. You got all these other great matches. You got I would feel embarrassed. Becky and 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 Rhea and Bianca and you got you know Roman and, and Seth. They, they got, they got absolutely matches. clowned on social media for having that as a main event. They got clowned. No, they I know got people were expecting Cody Rhodes but because no. people were expecting something right. else which because they of shouldn't, some reports which they out. shouldn't have. But still, not. you got to have a more respectable opponent. My opinion, you got to have a more respectable opponent. Who though? Bobby else on Who? that roster. What, what was Kevin Owens doing on that show? He, I don't know. I think Kevin Owens wrestled earlier. I didn't pay attention to the card, but I think yeah. Kevin Owens was there. There's got to be somebody better than Austin Theory. That's all I'm saying. I heard Kevin Owens. Was, uh, Sean Rossap did say Kevin Owens was talked about for that spot. Yeah. I don't know. It, it is it's what not it is. Austin Theory. One more for the road here. We do appreciate you guys listening to all 64 minutes of this half hour podcast. Uh, shout out to Eddie Kingston. We didn't talk about this match a whole lot, but dude, bro, finally did it. Got a big, big win one. on a pay-per-view. About time. Long overdue. Good for him. 
beat. He Chris won the big one. He finally won the big one. He beat Chris Jericho. He's never won at an AEW pay per view before. He has now. He's got one. He's on the board. He's on the board. Crap. You know what? Kingston. You know what I love about this is is the aftermath of the match, where you know I anticipated Jericho going full heel and not shaking his hand, maybe attacking him. But he didn't go that full heel. Like he oh. just did not shake the hand and said, "You can read his lips." He's like, "I can't. I can't shake your hand. I can't." Yeah, because he can't believe he lost to Eddie Kingston. <laughs> he can't believe he lost to Eddie Kingston, especially after he screamed at him and he said, "You'll never win the big one." And then three seconds later, he's getting beat uh, by Eddie Kingston because he got trapped in the uh, submit. Not only that, he had to submit. That's the thing Ooh. that kicks Jericho in the balls, right? Is he had to literally give Eddie Kingston the win by tapping out. It's going to be interesting to see how they follow up on that. Uh, Romeo, uh, appreciate you filling in for SP3 tonight. Uh, tell people where they can uh, find your stuff and, and follow you and all that good stuff. Again, thank you for having me. Uh, you can follow me at True Heel Romeo on Twitter and Instagram where I talk everything wrestling, everything sports, everything pop culture, everything gambling. Uh, it's, I talk everything. So I, I am a fun follow. Uh, see it for yourself and you can follow me on the true hill heat youtube channel where i have a bunch of shows bunch of watch alongs raw nxt uh dynamite watch alongs pay-per-view watch alongs sp3 calls me the ace and the face of true heel heat just see for yourself subscribe to true heel heat thank you and uh, also, while you're at it, hop on over to YouTube. Make sure to check out my conversation with Corey Graves and Carmella, which again drops at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, depending on when you're listening to this episode. Uh, and subscribe to the Believe in Pro Wrestling Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, we we did give away our $50 gift card to uh, Shop AEW, so congratulations to the uh, winner, whose name I now have to look up because I forgot who it was. Two seconds. Ask me for peace. Damn it, it wasn't me? It Damn was not it. You. Congratulations to Aspie. Appreciate the support. We're going to be doing some more giveaways later on this year. They would have we'll probably see. called it rigged if I won anyways. Yeah, probably. So subscribe now and get pre-registered for future giveaways. Because if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, you're always registered to win our giveaways. Because that's how nice of a guy I am. <laughs> how nice of a guy that SP3 is. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Talk at you again tomorrow after what is hopefully a good Monday Night Raw. You've been listening to the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast brought to you by Bet Online. Go Bengals. Amen.